You know, some musings are worth talking about for sure, but they don't quite have enough ammo to discuss in a full video. Thus the theme of this musing, potpourri. It's probably not going to be the first time I delve into this. These are for instances of many discussions that I've wanted to cover. If you've got any others that might be worth discussing, let me know in the comments. I'm one of those weirdos who can't end it with whether or not something is good or bad. I've got to find out why. I have to find out who it's for, and if it succeeds at being for that person. It's for that reason I try to go to as many lengths as possible to demonstrate where I'm coming from and why. I recall a comment a while back where someone said they used my videos to pitch a game to their friends. I don't bring this up as some sort of stroking of ego, I could do, certainly do that, but rather to show responsibility. Yes, my reviews and musings are just my opinion, but I nevertheless have an obligation to present it in the fairest light possible because there's always the possibility that one of my videos could be a determining factor in whether someone invests in the subject matter. If I misrepresent said subject matter, then that could affect the potential sale and the trust placed in my ability to cover games. That's a trust I never wish to abuse. When I rebooted my review format a few years ago, the one thing I chose to get rid of was the 10-point scoring gimmick. To be quite honest, I was never thrilled with using it in the first place, but I felt it was something I had to do. I don't care for numeric scoring systems for two reasons. First, it doesn't mean anything. What determines the qualifications for a 7, a 5, or a 3 out of 10 is far too subjective for me. Not to mention the gradual inflation that's been seen where a 7 is viewed as average. Secondly, a view that it takes away the, from the actual body of the review. Even if it's placed at the end, that number will be at the forefront of someone's mind when they think of that review, not the context of why. And I think the outrage from fans of a high-profile game that only gets a 7 by a certain reviewer only serves to justify why I have this attitude, especially when the beginning and end of the vitriol over that review is just the score, divorced of actually reading the damn thing. Not to excuse people who make bad arguments in bad reviews, but that's a whole other matter. My alternative instead is to use broadly defined terms. It's less about is it good and more of who, if anyone, would I recommend this to. So instead of hearing 4, 5, or 6 out of 10, you're always going to hear recommended, strongly recommended, playable, caution, or avoid. Even though I've been highly critical of certain editions, I surprisingly don't hate D&D. If I hate anything, it's the idea that I have to use D&D for what I want to do. To use a video game example, I don't particularly care for the notion that a Castlevania game has to use the Metroidvania style popularized by Symphony of the Night. Tradition for its own sake does no one any favors. Furthermore, D&D is not and never will be a universal game. I think I made that clear in my last two D&D videos. There's some genres and playstyles it simply isn't designed for, and I believe in using the right tool for the job, game system being no exception. Sometimes I want to do something that fits in with D&D, and sometimes I don't. Also, I do not believe in just adding house rules to address this. House rules should be a spice, not the main dish. An example of what happens when they are the main dish is the recurring punchline in gaming known as the Palladium system. It is very well known that no one can run that thing as written, and in my experience, no one ever did. They always had some degree of house rules, and in worst case scenario, you had a small book full of house rules. But even so, with the recent glut of D&D 5th edition streamers, something that I'll have to discuss in another musing, as well as the signs of another OGL bubble, why should I follow the trend? That's just counterproductive, hence the whole expanding horizons thing. I feel it's best I put my money where my mouth is and try and focus on other games. As I've said many times, there's too many alternatives out there not to. That's all for now on this little potpourri thing. This is a bit of an experiment I'll be returning to in the future. If you've got any mini subjects or, or the like, or something that you think would make a good musing video, uh, let me know and I'll give it a once-over. In the meantime, as always, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay frosty people.